Hello, welcome to my next video. I'm going to, we're going to go down a little different path on this one. Uh, we're not going to use a pattern, just going to use a thought process I got in my head. I'm going to take this block of wood and turn it into a box similar to that. This was just a practice box made out of some real soft wood. It's kind of hard to cut clean and straight and keep from dinging it up and make it match right because it was so soft you couldn't hardly work it without overworking it. But this is cedar. It's a little. It's about twice as hard as that. Uh, this is three three-quarter inch pieces of cedar glued together. I made a. Uh, generally, you shoot for two inches on a scroll saw. And they consider two inches the maximum you can cut. My saw will go two and a quarter. Uh, so three of these together just makes right at three and a quarter or two and a quarter. So I've got my little tri square that I, I've tested everything. Make sure that it's it's pretty much square and it is. It's not perfect but it's it's pretty good you want it pretty good so the lids and everything match without gaps and so i've made me a little a little uh, measuring device here it's made out of oak uh, there's three one sixteenth inch pieces laminated together uh, a quarter inch is slightly more than than i like and uh, eighth inch is not really enough so this is three sixteenths it's slightly larger than three sixteenths but I'm going to use that to mark where I want to cut. So there's no plan, there's no pattern. Uh, there is a plan, it's just not written down. This is in my in my thought process. First, you got to have the block. Then I'm going to mark, mark it. Now I'm going to make this the top, the lid. Then I'm going to mark it and cut the lid and the base off. And I'm going to use this to mark to get where I want the uh, cut to be made. And then when I get the get those parts off, then I'll mark, use this to mark the width of the walls. And I'll mark that all the way around, drill an entry hole, cut the center of it out, uh, set, set it aside, and then lay it on its side and cut a little section off the top of it, which will go on the bottom of the lid. And then you glue the bottom back on and you glue that piece to the lid. And basically from there, it's just finishing up. You kind of make sure everything fits so I like to. Uh, not have any gaps on the corners, like to be a nice, seamless almost. But it don't always work out that way. It's a little bit of miss in your cut, or this. But you can go to the sander usually and dress it up and make it fit. So let me get me a pencil and we'll mark this because I want to cut. I want to cut across the grain, and that's to be the grain right there. So I'm gonna mark right there. Just mark that right there. And turn it over and do the same to the other side. So that's where I want to make my first two cuts. That'll be a lid and a base. And uh, so now I need to take it to the scroll saw and I'll cut that. And we're at the scroll saw. I've changed the blade out. I've uh, put a non reverse tooth blade in it because a thick piece like this, I don't like to use reverse tooth. It's harder to hold down. You can use one. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be necessary here anyway. And then I marked the wrong wrong side, so I switched over because I actually want to cut across the grain. So I cut I marked the grain, uh, the end grain, instead of the, uh, the the top I want to cut through. So the, I'm cutting this piece is being cut off. That'll be either the lid or the the bottom, and the other end will be the the opposite of that. So we're going to see if we can cut this cedar with this blade I've got.
can see you have to cut that slowly. I made a nice smooth cut. Didn't cut exactly straight up and down, which is not unusual, but we can make that match up okay. So I'll cut the bottom and then we'll mark and, and cut the middle out. So I got the top and bottom of that cut off. There's one of them. Uh, one of those will be uh, the base, It'll be glued back on. The other one will be a removable lid. Uh, I'm going to try to mash it back up where it comes from. But uh, what I've done now is I, I took this over because I used a smaller blade than I usually like to use, but that's what I had in non reverse tooth. A uh, larger blade, less likely to wander down through the material. And in both cases, it kind of it was off just a little bit, a couple of thirty seconds uh, from one side to the other. The, the blade didn't come through directly up and down. It wanders through that thick material. It's, it's hard, fairly hard material, and the grain affects it in different ways. Uh, a little little thicker blade won't give as much through the material, but I like as small as curve as I can make also. Because then I took it over to the disc sander and I, I leveled it back off again and I'll work on these, although I don't like doing that on a belt sander. I have a, a sheet of glass and I put some sandpaper, clamp it to my desktop here and I by hand work those down however they need to be done just by rubbing on the sandpaper. Now, it won't need a lot of that, but I'll, I'll adjust it a little bit uh, before I glue everything back together. But right now what I'm going to do, I've marked it with my little marker gauge here. Uh, set it on the tabletop, put it there and marked that's the width I want the walls. So now I'm going to find me a drill bit, smallest drill bit I can find that'll go all the way through that, put it on the drill press and, and, and drill it close to one of the corners and then just take it back to the saw and cut it out. This will be a little easier, it's uh, a, a little thinner than what I was cutting before. But you still got to be very slow, methodical, and I may even put a larger blade for this one because I don't care about the curve as much. So uh, let me drill the hole and I'll get it back to the saw and we'll look at that. Okay, so I drilled a hole. That's the smallest one. I, it's a little larger than I like because I'm going to use the top piece of this as the bottom of the lid. <clears throat> but this will work okay. I'll just cut through to the corner and go from there. And I can fill that hole in with some sawdust and some glue, probably. I've got plenty of uh, walnut sawdust here to put back in it. Um, I put, I moved up to a seven blade. It's a reverse tooth, but it's not the bottom part is reversed. This is every second or third tooth is reversed. Uh, it should cut a little easier on this large block without uh, uh, trying to flop it up and down on me. We'll see as I get started. We'll see how easy this is to cut. Another thing I said about the curve, I'm not as concerned about the curve here except that it makes a larger gap between the, the wall and the top piece that I'm going to cut off, which make the lid a little slightly loose, but we'll see what we can do about that when we get there. Right now, let's just cut this center part out. I don't know if I'll film the whole thing, but I'll, I'll show it get it started here. <laughs> You can see it's, it's fairly hard to cut. Uh, I might have to experiment with a different blade. It's wanting to get hot. I'm going to slow it down and we're going to go over and cut this first side. And if that's working well, then I'll cut the camera off and finish it. And then we'll see about cutting the other piece that I need to cut. And then we'll be working on sanding and gluing.
Okay, that's cutting much better at a slower speed. Uh, it's, but this every other, every third reverse tooth, it still wants to bounce it up a little bit more than I like because it's a solid block, but it's manageable. You just have to make sure you hold it down. Uh, if you have a blade with no reverse teeth in it at all, it would be better for a cut like this. But I'm going to turn the camera off here and finish this, and then uh, I'll flip it back on, and we're going to cut the top of this off. And then we'll be through cutting. So here we are, I'm halfway through. I slowed it down even more. And I like to stop every once in a while like this and just kind of clean all the sawdust that every time I've the sawdust, you see it won't go back any further there. It's got some behind it, but that's all right. Uh, it's trying to jump on me pretty good because the blade's trying to grab coming up. And uh, fingers get tired of holding it down. But We'll make this corner. Got to keep a firm grip. Cut very slowly. So I'll finish this off and we'll come back. About to finish this up. So I'm going to show the last cut here when we get it ready to come out. Here we go. See, it has to be slow and methodical. And we have it cut. Alright, so I'll take this off and then we'll cut the bottom of that piece off. There, I finally got that little piece cut off. That was the most difficult cut of all because the smaller piece was harder to hold and the corner kept wanting to bounce in the, in the hole there. Had a hard time keeping the blade straight in the hole in the slot. But I got it off. Uh, that's not a super hard wood, but it's a little harder than pine or something like that. So anyway, now I'm going to take this over to the table and adjust all these pieces, clean them up, and uh, we'll see what we got to do to glue them together. Okay, <clears throat> so we're back at the my workbench. What I've got to do, I've got me a little sheet of uh, glass here. With, uh, that's 120 grit sandpaper. And I'm going to take a look at these bottoms and tops. Make sure they're uniform thickness all the way around. I'll work on the sandpaper with that. Uh, on all of these, this one not quite as critical. I like them all to be even. Uh, this actually, I like the way this came out. It came out straight, and they're all uniform thicknesses, which is what I really want to look for. This one didn't quite do that, but it's a little soft wood. It's harder to cut, uh, cut properly, cut it straight. Uh, this was a fairly difficult cut, but I've done worse. So, take a look at these. You don't have to get this precise with it, but you can see it's a little narrower on this corner than it is here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work, work it on this sandpaper until I get it. I want to clean it up for one thing, and then I want to kind of get it a uniform thickness. So I'll work on that a while, and then we'll come back and see about matching everything up. Okay, I'm ready to put the, the final glue on this uh, little box. What I've done, I've already glued the bottom on. I've cut this little piece off the internal part that, that came out of the, of the middle of the box. I've blocked it up. I've put a little piece of paper to give myself a little spring right there to keep it up. And what I'm going to do, then I'm going to uh, going to put this this piece on top of that and put a little glue right there. And put this piece on top of that and line it up and kind of hold it till everything gets tacky so the, the corners will be aligned and everything else. So here we go, let me put some glue on it. And that may be a little too much. Spread it around just a little bit. Take just a little bit of that off. Put it back in there. And we're gonna set this on. That should keep this 
bottom piece aligned. We'll get these all lined up here. That's about as good as it's going to get right there, I believe. Just have to check, make sure it doesn't slide to that glue gets tacky a little bit. But then that's going to be good enough. I'm going to put a clamp on that. And then I'll uh, dress the box up a little bit with a, with a sander and we'll take a look at it when I get through with that. So there you have it. You know, we have the finished project. Uh, it's not a real fancy little box, but I, it's kind of neat. I like the way it cut out. It's cedared and it smells really well. Uh, it's got a, a whole shop smells like cedar that I've been sanding and cutting with this. But uh, I could have done a better job of matching these up with where they came from, but uh, ultimately that doesn't matter. That's a matter of personal preference. But that's just a quick and easy way uh, to build a crude little box. And it's not super easy to cut. Uh, the better your scroll saw, the easier it would be to cut. And you, you got the right blade. And that's the two key things. But yeah, this is this is nothing fancy. Uh, you can just a little uh, techniques you can use to make a, a box. It'd be easier to make if it's smaller, actually, because it'd be easier to cut and all. But anyway, that's what I'm gonna do in the next few videos. Hopefully, is to get into some patternless scroll saw projects and you know, freestyle stuff. I'm still coming up with ideas and things to try to do. Uh, so. If you're going to enjoy that, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button on this video, and uh, I hope to see you in the next one, and I thank you for watching this one.